So we have some drama, some drama internally um, at MSNBC, which is juicy. Um, Daily B says, exclusive, MSNBC and Keith Olbermann were in lengthy discussions to fill the Rachel Maddow void on the network until Maddow vetoed him herself. Maddow vetoed Keith Olbermann, um, and he gave her her start, or at least that's what, how the story goes. Keith Olbermann, who shaped the network's liberal voice before being canned more than a decade ago, was in lengthy discussions with NBC Universal CEO Jeff Schell and news boss Caesar Condi to return to MSNBC and take over the key 9 p.m. time slot the former Countdown host told Source Material. But any dream of an Olbermann reunion was squashed when Maddow recently signed a massive $30 million deal to work less and transition out of her nightly broadcast, stepped in to personally veto him. As her successor, quote, I offered to have her production company produce the show, would give her some proxy control and a fuck ton of money, but she and former MSNBC chief turned consultant to Maddow's production company, Phil Griffin, refused. Olbermann told Source Material, claiming that the network also offered him a show in 2016, quote, I, I do not expect to continue negotiations with the successors to this management team, he added. Management is worse than asleep at the switch. MSNBC declined to comment in response. Maddow's rejection of Olbermann as her replacement is especially noteworthy considering the role he played in turning her from an Air America radio host into his protege as an MSNBC regular and eventual star voice of the channel. While the pair were friendly during Olbermann's glory days with the network, their relationship has soured in recent years. Okay, so they go on to explain, you know, why the relationship soured or there's a separate article that explains why their relationship soured. He had been going around... And basically saying, like, these people never give me credit. I made them. Like, I turned them into what they are and who they are. Not just Matto, but he also brings up Steve Kornacki and he brings up some others. And, you know, in one of the articles I read about this, they were like, it's not even true, the thing about Steve Kornacki. Like, Steve Kornacki had already been in the business for a while. He had done shows in various different places and he'd been a contributor for really long. And then, you know, eventually at some point, Keith uh, may have given him some sort of a shot at something, but... He was already well-established, and Keith made it seem like I took this guy from nothing and made him into something. So Keith was stretching the truth there. I don't know the reality in terms of Rachel Maddow. I don't know how directly Keith Olbermann played a role in making Rachel Maddow Rachel Maddow. Um, but I do know this. I do know this. And this is um, back when I was with the Young Turks. Behind the scenes, I had a number of discussions uh, with Jank Uger about various things. And one of the things Jank really impressed upon me is that Keith Olbermann is an absolute psychopath that like off air <clears throat> he's impossible to deal with just incredible like just next level diva incredibly demanding of people incredibly ungrateful like this is the stuff that i've heard and now how true is that i mean i don't know i tend to think there's at least some truth in that if not it's the total truth um but Maddow vetoing him is interesting for a number of reasons because it's like, well, why? Why did you? Uh, is she doing it for that reason? She knows that he's a menace and she doesn't want to put whatever the staffers who she may like or whatever through it. Is that the reason? Uh, do they think, is it a business decision? Like, he's such a loose cannon. He might do the show for a month and then he's gone. That's possible. He's, he sort of has a track record of going places and then leaving abruptly, whatever. Um, or is it more of a selfish thing where Maddow's like, because Maddow's the number one, was the number one rated show on the network by far. Um, is it a situation where Maddow feels like if he comes in here, he's going to be my ratings? And I don't want that. There have been people who've made decisions like that before. You know, it's like the classic comedian story of like a comedian wants a shitty opening act to then make themselves look better. You know, a lot of comedians don't do that. A lot of comedians just love funny and they don't care who they're following. But some comedians are selfish enough where it's like, give me somebody who I shine after, you know. So I don't know. But the the part that's most interesting to me is, of course, just the raw politics of it. Because as bad as Rachel Maddow is, and I, I think she's bad. I mean, there was a time when she was good. She, she went after Obama for continuing the Afghanistan war and doing the surge and all this stuff. There was a time when she was good. Like, she was more married to the policy stuff than to the Democratic partisan rah-rah cheerleading stuff. But then, eventually, over time, it became rah-rah partisan cheerleading. 
And of course, she seemingly sided much more with Hillary than Bernie and that election. And the left sort of totally abandoned her on that front because that choice was obvious. I mean, it it wasn't difficult, you know. Um, But as bad as she is, his politics are actually way, 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 way worse. And I know you're probably thinking, well, hold on. She's like, in a sense, Maddow's like, was like the left wing version of Alex Jones because she was pushing Russiagate on a daily basis on her show. And she was, that's true. And and she was wrong, obviously. Uh, but Keith Olbermann is that on steroids. Keith, I went back, it, as I was reading this article, I decided I want to go back and see because Keith Olbermann did a GQ show at like the beginning of the Trump era. And I wanted to see, is it as bad as I remembered it? And it, it's actually worse than I remembered it. One of the segments I watched was Keith talk. Remember when Hillary Clinton made that co- basket of deplorables comment? And the specifics of that comment, Hillary said, look, about 50%, about half the Trump supporters are quote unquote a basket of deplorables, meaning they're TFGs. They're unsalvageable. You know, it doesn't matter how convincing you are, how many facts you show, you're just never going to convince them, right? Keith did commentary on that and said, Hillary, you are fucking wrong. You're wrong. Because the number ain't 50%, it's 100% of them are deplorables. Well, hold on, wait. Now, I don't remember the exact numbers, so don't quote me on this, but I think it was like 6 to 8 million people were Obama voters who then went to Trump. Are they deplorables? Are they all deplorables? So everybody who voted for Trump was voting for the racism and bigotry? There was not a single person was like, hey, he said he doesn't want to outsource my job, and I feel like my job might get outsourced, I'm going to vote for him. It's that kind of politics, that kind of like incredibly partisan, idiotic politics that is just, I'm allergic to it. I'm allergic to it. You have to be in the business of persuasion. You have to be in the business of treating human beings like human beings. That doesn't mean you can't have righteous indignation and anger when necessary, but if your righteous indignation goes to 100% of the other side, then you're, you're admitting, I would like to permanently lose, please. Thank you very much. Because Hillary didn't win. So if you want to, like, take a a snapshot of that time in history and freeze it, and the Democratic supporters stay Democratic supporters, and the Republican supporters are just the basket of deplorables who are irredeemable, well, then it's like, you're admitting, I would like to lose in perpetuity. I don't want to change anybody's mind. I don't want to persuade anybody. I don't want to actually move in the right direction. I don't want to look at the overarching, uh, you know, features of the system which got us to this point. I don't want to put the blame where it should go, which is on billionaires and corporations and the corruption of the system. And I just want to talk about how people who disagree with me are bad. That was Keith Olbermann. That was Keith Olbermann. And everything was, you know, you know him. Everything's hyperbolic and performative. Now, look, don't don't get it twisted. There was a time when Keith Olbermann was a voice in the wilderness. There was a time when I, like, again, when I was first getting involved in politics, I sort of looked up to him because he was the only one who was out there just rallying against George W. Bush in the Iraq war. And it seemed like it was so brave because nobody else was saying it. And he was saying it on mainstream media. He was leading the charge on that front. So I remember watching him being like, God damn, he's good. This is so principled. This is so on point. This is so brave. He's, he's, he was, you know, just booming with confidence. But then, you know, you, you realize in retrospect, he wasn't doing it because of like a real principled anti-war position. He was doing it out of really just rank partisanship and self-aggrandizement and narcissism. And it's like, oh, okay. Because then all those bad qualities over the years came out and he looked like the goofball that he is, you know? So, I mean, back in the day, Keith, look, I'll give, like, I'll always like that stuff. The, the, when he was rallying against war, when nobody else was, I'll always appreciate that and respect that. But what happened to him over the years, he became insane. And Maddow is also insane, but to a lesser degree. And I'd be very curious. I would love to be a fly in the wall with Maddow explaining her real reason to somebody. Here's why we can't have Keith. But it would have been crazy to see what would happen. I mean, he would become public enemy number one of the right if he was back on MSNBC every night. They would have a field day with him. They would clip him every other every day on his show. And it would be, he'd be saying something that makes basically... People on the left face palm like, oh, Jesus Christ. Why? Come on, man. Reel it in a little bit. You're being crazy. You're going too far. But uh, yeah, so there we have it. Fascinating story. Fascinating story. Matt Alvito and Keith Olbermann from coming back to MSNBC. Ever since Adpocalypse, when YouTube defunded all independent news and politics overnight, we haven't trusted them. We know they can pull the rug out from underneath us at any time. If you enjoy this content, please consider tipping a dollar or two per month on the Secular Talk Patreon. Link in the video description box below. Thanks for your support.